really wanna perpetrate, cause this 38 will be designated for all those who hate it like just man, I'm contemplating. Your moves, you lose, now your hot you gave me. New moves, more dudes, now the top you made me. Same rules, new crew, now the club you made me. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. It's Van and we are all the LFI family. And if you're not already with the LFI family, I'm gonna need for you to hit that subscribe button right there, Jack. Go on, hit that thing. I'm whispering because the house is packed. It's still quarantine around here, bro. But everybody are still working or in, you know, um, summer STEM classes. And, um, but I still gotta get it in. I still gotta do my thing. I just gotta do it in another part of the house and I gotta do it quietly. But I saw something on YouTube, man, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check this out, guys. Um, there's something on YouTube where there's a white guy. He's talking about his um, his black experience, his black cookout experience, his very first black cookout experience. And um, people have been telling me to check that journey out. So that's what we about to do. Also, guys, the Welfare Boy shirts are on sale for um, just go ahead and buy them joints. Uh, <laughs> Welfare Boy is who I am. And a lot of people who've been with me for a long time, y'all know how deep that goes. So they'll only be out for two weeks. So go ahead and cop yourself one. All right, so we about to check this joint out, guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Without further ado, hopefully I'm not making too much noise. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to start this one off by saying I got a lot of black friends, okay? Most of them I got through playing football. They were my teammates. We've been to war together on the football field, loving to death. Now, with that being said, ever since I have had said friends, they have told me that I have a bad habit of putting them in white people positions. I do not fully understand what they mean, but they gave me the <laughs> reference of, like, passing a cop on a two-lane road because he's going underneath the speed limit. Apparently, you ain't supposed to do that. It makes them nervous. Hell, uh, hell no, you're not supposed to do that. You let the damn police, I don't give a goddamn if it's 50 miles per hour. If it's 50 miles per hour and there's a police taking up the lane and he's driving daggone, um, 40 or he's driving 30 you stay behind him until he gets off the road damn that nah we not touch no mm -mm. anyway about a week ago get a call from a buddy of mine play football together says hey buddy i want you to come to cookout hell you ain't got to hit me in the face with a wet mop i don't <laughs> like cookouts so i show up to the cookout who is this guy man he's funny i like him you ain't got to hit me in the face with a wet mop <laughs> all right as i step out of my pick -em up truck Pick them up. <laughs> I realize that the only three white things at this cookout is the salt shaker, the napkins, and me. All right. As I'm walking up, I am being greeted by his grandma and grandpa and his great grandma and grandpa and his 47 cousins. All right. Which there's no way for me to remember all these people's names. Anyway, there's a long table where the food's, where the food, everybody's eating at. Okay. They bring me over and set me down at the head of the table. I'm already, I'm already really uncomfortable at this point because I don't know what's about to happen. Well, they say the blessing and I get up to go fix my food. Well, I was not aware that at a black cookout, you do not fix your own plate. <laughs> they fix your plate for you. Now, they bring me a whop. That was a country cookout that he was at. That was a country cookout. If you all went to one in the hood hood, Nah, bruh, you will starve if you're waiting for somebody else to fix your plate. But in the country, though, that's how they treat you, man. They treat you very well. They, they treat you very well. You don't fix your own plate. They take care of you. All right, let go. Dixie plate. There's some bitches rounded off like this with barbecue. That's some bitch. Okay? <laughs> and I'm going to eat it. Don't get me wrong. I don't waste food. I'm going to eat it. So as I'm sitting there munching away, you know, just kind of getting my bearings about where I'm at. These two ladies walk up to me, two of his aunties, with two different potato salads. All right. They say, we want to get your your opinion on which one of these is better. Now, apparently just because I'm white, I'm supposed to know the different calibers of mayonnaise. Well, I ain't finna piss nobody off at this cookout, okay? So I ate both of them, and I told them that they were just so damn good, both of them, I, I couldn't pick one. Now, at this current time, I am almost in a food coma because I've ate so much because I didn't want to disrespect nobody's cooking there. And then his great grandma, Mama T, that's what they call her. Mama T. She comes up to me with what looks like a five pound piece of cherry pie. Now, let me paint a picture for you. I've got the meat sweats, all right? Got barbecue sauce on my shirt. 
I'm drifting in and out of consciousness, and she wants, she's bringing me a five pound piece of pie. Now, I saw Friday after next. I know what happens when you disrespect somebody's grandmama. I saw what happened to Craig and Day Day when they disrespect somebody's grandmama. You ain't have, you ain't finna be chasing me through these pines because we way out in the woods at this cookout. I'm white, not stupid. So as I eat this pie, which I'm eating this pie because I ain't finna piss off nobody, especially the head woman there because she ranked up top. That's great grandma. You don't mess with her. I finish this pie and I drift off into a Caucasian kycosis <gasps> of a. What do you say, Caucasian kycosis? <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. That is hilarious, man. My damn allergies are acting up, bro. Ooh, that was hilarious, bro. Food coma. I did just like this right here, just like this. I went, whew, I'm full. As soon as I tipped my head back up, the table I'm sitting at is no more food on this table. I don't know how long I was out for, but somehow I have, I'm still in the same chair. I have been dealt into a high stakes spades game at an all black cookout besides me. What the fuck is going on? How did I get here? It Uh, it's getting serious now. Whenever they start playing spades, it's serious, bruh. And why would they deal him a hand, bruh? That's, that's hilarious. Like, he's asleep. He's clearly knocked out. They figure, okay, he already sit right there, so he playing. Who else playing? All right, he on my team. All right, let go. What point in my life did I take this turn to take me to where I'm at? And now the cards is in front of me, and I got no idea how to play spades, okay? None. I got no idea. All right, I'm white. We played go fish and cornhole. All we did, we got bored one day, literally did the whitest thing possible, walked out in the field, got some corn, took our pocket knives and cut it off the stalk, all right, put it in a bag, went over there, found some plywood in the shed, cut a hole in it, put it on an angle, and we tossed it at each other. That's what we do. I love cornhole, man. Pause. I, I like that game. I'm, I'm horrible at it, but I really like that game. I've been introduced to it. <laughs> First time I played cornhole was last year. Oh my gracious, man. The way that, it's crazy how cultures are so, so different, man. It's, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. I have no idea what spades is. So as they give me the run around idea what the hell is going on with this spades game, I realize, I look at my hand and I realize that I probably got a pretty decent hand. Well, they asked me, they said, Zach, how many books you got? Which they had just explained this to me now. I'm talking about just now. I said, it looks like I got eight books. Apparently that is the wrong damn answer for your first hand of spades ever because as soon as I said I got eight books, three Glock nines hit the top of the table. <laughs> Anybody who got eight books, you're cheating, man. You're cheating, period. You can't have eight books. It's impossible to have eight books by yourself. It's not impossible, but usually if you got eight books, you never say you got eight books. You just sit back and you be like, mm, I can, I can give you five. I can give you five, maybe six. And people be like, man, his hand must be nice. Then they watch you the whole time, make sure you don't double play or you don't, um, you try to set out on, on, on one of the cards. Like if a, if a club is played, they watch you, making sure you don't play no club the whole game, or if a, if a heart or diamond is played, they watch you, making sure you don't play a heart or diamond, because they know if you got six books, bruh, you got a handful of spades, bruh. All right, let go. I've got every damn spade you could possibly have and three other aces. Well, as I survive that round, I go to get up, and one of his cousins come over and taps me on the shoulder and say, hey, buddy, you wanna go throw bones? I don't know what they're talking about. I ain't got a she shit and clue what they're talking about. She but I ain't gonna piss nobody off. You gotta understand, at this point, I am in survival mode. I am not pissing not one person off at this cookout. I do whatever they tell me to do. If they want me to stand on my head and blow bubbles out of my ass, I will do it. Don't hurt me, okay? Now, I did not know bones meant dice. I was leaning more toward dominoes, which I kinda knew how to play from the Elks Lodge. But apparently, 
Bones means dice. I lost $36 so fast my fucking head was spinning. Okay? And apparently when they yelled gator, that just code word for the white man loses because they just took my money. I just put some more down until I ran out of money. Which is fine. Made it through that one too. Now. Gate is what they, when they yell gate, like if you roll something and before the dice are done spinning, they can yell gate. And if they yell gate, if if um if the dice haven't stopped yet, then you get to um that roll don't count. You have to start over. As I'm slowly trying to make my way back to my truck, I went over to thank Mama T. You know, I thank I thank my buddy, I thank everybody on the way to my truck. And I've got my truck in my sights. I am zeroed in on my truck trying to leave this place. Now, I get to my truck, I put my hand on my truck to go open it and there's a, like a sense of relief that comes over me. Like I didn't piss nobody off, nothing went wrong. I went, whew, I made it. Now, as I open my door, I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. The whole damn cookout is behind me. Everybody there is right around my truck with Mama T right there in the front and my buddy. And he looked at me, he said, hey buddy, Next week's Mama T's birthday, you coming back? And I looked at him. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Bamboozled on what to say. And the only thing I could come up with was, you damn right I'm coming back. Because that's the best damn barbecue <laughs> I've ever had in my life. I don't know if you've ever been to All Black Cookout. But I'm going to tell you something. If you get the invitation, you better take that shit. Because that is the best <laughs> food you ever going to get and the nicest damn people. I scared shitless. I ain't going to lie. I'm a big guy. I was acting like a little bitch. I didn't know what was happening. But at the same time, that's the most fun and some of the best people I've ever been around in my entire life. I'm going back next week. Bet. I told him, I said, y'all need me to bring something like some ice because I ain't trying to cook with y'all. Y'all want some ice or like or like some, uh, you want me to go get my little cousin Kyle to wear his monster hats and shit and bring him? You know, so he'll, he'll feel at home. He got white beaters and stuff. Y'all, what y'all need? They told me I couldn't bring nothing but myself, me, and I, which I will be there. I'm white, not stupid. I ain't pissing nobody off. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that was pretty dope, man. Pretty usual, man. I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please be sure to do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and we are all the LFR family. I look forward to seeing y'all on the next one, all right? Peace out.